A castle is only as strong as its foundation. Let us return to the basics. Welcome back again. Unchained, or should I say untamed. Recently I picked up the Warcry starter box. You know we have the iron golems and the untamed beasts within. Um, I've always wanted to play this game. We'll see if I can get around to it. I'll just keep buying more boxes in the middle of quarantine. But the model I'm prepping up today serves a purpose. I have a one-on-one -on -one lesson with this figurine, so I spent uh, the previous night building up a base and I wanted to record the process because it's simple enough. A lot of the materials are very easy to source and it's a short list of ingredients, something easy to replicate across, say, an entire faction if you wanted to theme something out. So let's get into it. Our main ingredients are, of course, the base, some cork board, a putty spiral, a little bit of ground cover, a piece of plaster, and, of course, the all-important muscle warrior. The first thing I want to do is clip away his tactical rock. I'll be making my own tactical rock to replace the one that has been carefully sculpted by a professional. Following that, I'll get a little piece of my cork board. I want to create a bit of a riser for the model. All of my models will rise above the battlefield in glorious conquest. Secondly, I want to position this piece of plaster at, at a slight angle, so I've taken a, a second piece of cork, and after a little bit of test fitting and finagling, I was able to trim it down so it held that piece of plaster just at the right angle. Once I was happy with that, I took out my mechanical pencil and just started drawing some random kind of dog tooth and swirl markings on the piece of plaster. Maybe it's some, some ancient ruins or some piece of a worship site that's been engraved by the untamed beasts, but I just wanted to add a, some runic markings that tell of a world gone by. Once this was sketched out with my mechanical pencil, I took my X-Acto blade and started engraving along those lines best I could. Uh, plaster is brittle, this is not this doesn't have to be perfect, and it won't be perfect, but just make sure that you're, you're scoring the lines in deep enough so the paint has somewhere to go. You don't want to just fill it in with primer, so you'll have to dig it in there and dig deep at that. The next ingredient, I wanted to add a little putty spiral. I've, whenever I'm sculpting things or filling in gaps, I end up with extra pieces of putty, and I've found that Smoothing them, them out with my fingers, kind of pulling it to a point and gently twisting it around makes this, this cool kind of fantasy stone. Who knows, we're in the land of chaos. So just a little putty spiral and it's something that's really easy to do with all those leftover pieces of putty that are just going to dry and not be uh, useful for anything anyways. I'll set that off to the side to dry, get my piece of plaster in the right position with a little bit of trimming and plucking away at the cork board. You want things to kind of mound up, you don't want all of this raw cork showing. A little bit is okay, but you can always tell that it's, it's made from cork. Now that I have a firm foundation, I took on my pin vise drill, drilled a little hole into his heel, clipped a length of brass rod, inserted it into the hole, and then attached him to the base. I didn't glue him in, but this would give me a solid point of reference where he'd be anchored so I can start to build all the other objects around his pose. The putty spirals came into play next, just glued them down at the base of his lower leg, and there's also a deliberate reason why I'm placing these objects where they are. I, I want to accent the model's pose, his one arm raised above himself so the little spikes will kind of accent that curve, and then the, the other forearm is angled downward, kind of running parallel with the ground or the, the tactical rock that we removed and then added again. But you can see this helps frame the model up nicely at that perfect viewing angle. Once those larger objects were in place, it was time for a little bit of ground cover. We can disguise all of our seams and mistakes, we can build up a little mound so his foot looks like it's actually touching the ground, but what I have here is a little bit of dirt from outside, but I also have taken some pieces of roots and just random dried up plants, small pieces of driftwood, and just kind of ground it up in my fingers because I wanted to create a just a different level of texture. All these models, I want them standing in their own kind of setting where the, 
the iron golems might be in a more uh, dead or kind of a foundry area. I want the untamed beasts running free in the wild. Then building up from there, I had a chance to add just a few more details. I could throw in a skull, some discarded bones. Um, I was actually running low on these at the time, surprisingly, so a little bit of a root growing out from under the ruins, um, some smaller pieces of ruins. You know, as everything breaks, it kind of leaves smaller pieces of itself in that area, so why not have a little bit of continuity? And of course, just a little more of that ground cover to kind of fill in the gaps, make sure everything was secure and looked like it had been kind of sitting naturally for a while. And he's all done. Unchained, untamed, ready to be painted upon. I hope this video inspires you to up your basing game a little bit. Even if it is just a little, these small gestures can really add a lot to the cinematic effect and the visual impact, which is I think why models and wargaming is so cool to a lot of us in the first place. So please let me know any questions, any comments and concerns you may have below. And until the next time, remain unchained. Once those larger objects were in place, it was time for a little bit of ground cover. You can 